Okay, hello my fellow Earthlings, here I am again. I just finished a small painting and I'm gonna show you what it is. It is a small still lives of an apple that became quite nice. And uh, in this, vi in this uh, tutorial I actually paint another apple underneath this apple. But I waited way too long. This is the apple I actually painted now. I waited way too long um, finishing it. So it turned so yellow that I just painted over it and painted it in this instead. As you can see uh, the textures and, and I think it became quite nice actually. It's quite toned down. And uh, you can see the first, you can see the process where I work with another apple. And then, in the middle of this video, you will see me change the apple and keep on painting. You actually find chapters in the description uh, or hyperlinks, as it's called, so you can just jump to where I start this one or back and forth. And yeah, there will be chapters in it, so you can jump around into your favorite things, favorite chapters. Okay, this is also a Patreon giveaway. And wacky enough, it is a Patreon giveaway for August, but it was actually August last year. I'm so out of whack with the Patreon giveaways, it's just a tragedy. But I'm now giving this to one of my Patrons. Uh, the other ones are coming up rapidly. I just also finished this this uh, onion which is a video and I'm working on this one and I'm also working on this small uh, landscape which will also be I think uh, this one will be uh, September no no yeah September maybe October and uh, yeah so I just see they are coming up rapidly and I will make all my Patreon giveaways rapidly to become assure as it's called because uh, I, and now I'm just gonna look away I'm just gonna pick one patron here like this I picked one and the winner this time is Ida Helena uh, Ida Helena something hey so I'm going to find her. I can go into Patreon actually and see if I can find Ida Helena. Sorry for this. Um, there's my Patreon. If you sign up for $5, the $5 tier, tier you will uh, actually, let me see, relationship manager. Many of my patrons who were my patrons aren't patrons anymore. So uh, maybe she hasn't been a patron for a while. But this is actually a patron giveaway for last year. So um, uh, she will actually get this now. Uh, Ida. Ida, Ida, Ida. Where's E? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, O, E, okay, H, am I totally, oh yeah, I have to see, pledges, all tier, active, these are actives, um, damn, yeah, well, I will find her, and her name is then Ida Helena, so again, maybe I have her on Facebook, Ida Helena. Yeah. No. Ida Helena. No. Yeah, that's her. She is not my friend anymore. And that's fine. Maybe she has never been that. But anyway, she won this painting and I'm gonna contact her so she gets her painting. She's probably not, uh, <laughs> for some reason, a uh, 
Patreon anymore. But that doesn't matter. She paid in and now she's getting her painting. And also a video of the full process. So with this, I hope that you give this video a thumbs up. Uh, check out the hyperlinks or the chapters because it gives me actually a uh, not a view for every time you use them. And uh, if you like to support my channel, you can go to my Patreon and uh, sign up for a dollar or five or whatever. If you want me to teach you how to paint, you can sign up also for 15. I will actually Skype with you or do some live streaming and help you with videos. Uh, and for five dollars, I will also kind of help you with answering your questions and helping you directly. So with this, give a thumbs up, leave a comment and uh, see you in the next video. Yay, enjoy. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna paint another apple for my Patreon giveaway. And uh, hopefully a happy Patreon will get this on his wall for the $5 he pays every month. Uh, I'm going to do it on this canvas. It is 25.25 uh, centimeters. It's going to come with a frame basically like this. And uh, yeah, keep watching and see me paint an apple. Still alive. Okay, here we go. Now, uh, as usual, I'm starting out with uh, uh, light areas. I think I want to have this being exactly the right size. So it will be full size, which means that the shine will go out of this canvas. And uh, I'm just going to mark up here. I usually place it like this and like this. Why do I do that? Because it's always nice to have more on top or down here. Uh, the shadow goes up here. Now I also measure the apple this way. So approximately it will be here and here. In a way when I work with these things, I often say that I, I'm not really painting an apple. I'm painting a portrait of an apple. Um, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to... It's easy, very easy actually, to trick people into believing that it is an apple. That's no sweat. Uh, but to be able to paint the apple or this apple that is a totally different ball game I will also try to keep this video I have a watch I'm going to take the time and I'm going to try to keep it short maybe under an hour with all layers and everything so you can actually just going to be about painting and uh, because there are other very long uh, still life videos you can on my youtube channel if you go will go into more depth where you actually can see me struggle like crazy with the uh, with the paintings as you can see i start with the light areas and that is also why i start on this uh, wash uh, with uh, and turpentine over uh, gesso because the gesso also gives me some uh, texture you can also build texture in the gesso before you start painting if you want to save some expensive paint since I'm using old home uh, it can be a good idea to try to save some paint on giving it a kind of a uh, block or gazelle or whatever they call it in uh, in the grounding itself That can be actually a good idea Now this apple actually leans a little bit over this way 
And that's also a thing I am very conscious of. I'm trying to find the right angle. I just don't put it up like, like, uh, like in, as a coincidence. I really try to to plan. You know, picking out an apple is a process in itself, and uh, can be. Even exhausting, even finding the right apple. Uh, and uh, yeah. So there's a shadow on there. I basically spend like, I would say, from 25 to an hour on the first sketching, like a half an hour to an hour. And a half, maybe, I would say, of the sketching process normally. The sketching process is uh, quite loose, as you can see. And um, um, it doesn't take me that much effort to make a sketch that works as the first layer. But I'm not going to do like other videos where I have done the whole sketching process. As I say, I want these videos now to be a little bit shorter. Uh, because people... Like also to watch shorter stuff. See now? Boom! And the very important thing when it comes to painting this now, it is to build you build like Rembrandt. You look at Rembrandt and you build thick colors where it's supposed to be thick and thinner where it's supposed to be thin. And that is how you build. That is how you uh, create a painting. Or well, I create a painting. With shape and with everything. See? So now I have decided how big this is going to be. I'm not going to start cheating. Maybe that's actually a little bit too small. Well, maybe I'll actually make it a little bit smaller than reality because it suits the format better. But the thing is to get these things here right. And um, sometimes my brain is tricking me to believing that it's kind of longer, thicker, and every time I look at the object, my brain goes, hey, it's thicker. The next time I look up, hey, it's thinner. Hey, it's thicker. And you keep on banging that drum. You go back and forth and back and forth, and it kind of drives you nuts in the end. So it can really be a challenging, challenging process. Um, to get that right but you know the beauty of the struggle if it wasn't for the struggle I don't think I would have painted at all and that's the same thing with life really if you don't have something to struggle with you become very empty very soon so Try to push yourself as much as you can uh, on every level and uh, good things might happen. You know, bad things will happen and if you do nothing you can be sure that bad things will happen. Uh, if you do a lot of good things Bad things will happen anyway, but at least you have done some good things. So you can look back on and say, well, despite the bad, I also did some good. So, yeah, that was segment number one, I think. Now, yeah, two more minutes. I will do 10 minute bursts, approximately 10 minutes, 
And then I will paint for a while and then we film some more. Now here is a more reddish. These apples tend to be extremely yellow when I put my light on them. And it's all, always a struggle to... Because I really love this intense color. I love intense contrasts. And sometimes I... Even, even I think it becomes a little bit too much. Or maybe even just basically too much but I think it's so boring when when uh, paintings doesn't have any contrast or they don't have any so I'm just gonna put in so they don't have any contrast so I prefer to give it that bang with using light on my objects. So that's me. In a nutshell. Okay, see you in the next episode. Okay, I've gotten a little bit further, as you can see. And uh, I'm still just working with uh, the sketch. Now oh, it's okay. I think I'm going to give it a kind of five minutes. So maybe more and try to narrow it down a little bit uh, as you can see I just start to give it the shadow here and that's the whole thing because I I kind of balancing balancing the shadow and the rest of the composition so, so I'm do like this you see I'm using a scrabeur, almost like I would do a charcoal. It would actually be funny to make a charcoal uh, rendition of the same apple. But apples tend to change so much uh, during the painting process if I use a lot of time on them or I don't paint on them every day or every other day or when it has actually dried. So it tends to become uh, change in colors and suddenly it starts to become more reddish and, and stuff. So I, I kind of need to concentrate on <coughs> painting more rapidly on it. Uh, but anyway, uh, it's standing on a glass uh, surface, as you saw in the beginning. So it's going to be. Uh, that's why you get this shine. And the thing here is that you see what's underneath it. That is so funny. I didn't actually realize that. I realized it in the cranium that I'm painting. Also, I will post on. I have posted, I know what comes first. <coughs> and this or that one, let me see. And uh, the shadow goes all the way under there. Now, I do a lot of approximation, it's not perfect, uh, but I try to get it basically right so I don't have to struggle with too many details and too many. Adjustments. Uh, keep it a little bit opaque here. Just keep it open. And uh, yeah. I 
It's funny how great I feel when I paint. Do you think the love of my life? As I said the first time I put on, put the pencil on the canvas, love my first stroke, you know. Just deep, deep, deep flow. And, uh, It's almost like I'm I'm the kind of person who drive dry um, or confidence from results. I don't have an inherent inherent confidence. I don't have this kind of narcissistic confidence that many artists have. Actually, I feel there's a lot of narcissists in art who really believe they are. The religious ones think they are basically uh, God sent, and uh, atheists think they are going to save the world by their conceptualism and their left wing leanings and everything. I just try to do the best artwork I can in relationship to my objective standards, which is of course the classics. And it keeps me grounded. I don't fly off into this thing. So, yeah. mm. Keep it a little bit open. And get that shape right here. It goes in here. I have to remember I'm holding on to meat this like this. <coughs> and now I feel like this one is more reddish on this side. Well actually it's it's basically Kaplak and uh, white, I put on now. Kaplak white and, and cobalt. And then just the beginning, you know, because this violet compares to the yellow and blue and orange and greens. And there's a lot of different colors in this thing here. And, uh, Despite that as being quite, you know, being uh, dark there, there's a lot of complementary colors and stuff in it. So, here is the, the beginning, the first work right. and just for fun I'm just gonna put in that thing the apple cliche thing you know this this one the thing that makes everyone know that this is an apple <laughs> Well, it is more advanced than that. You also, the, there are difficult things like like this shadow that comes like up from there and goes all the way over like this because there hits a light that comes in like that. And these are the things that I, I always start to struggle with when I get further than this stage here. And it's also why I want people to keep going. I want them to. I want them to stop making only sketches. And um, kind of go into a uh, where it's actually difficult because sketching easy. Um, finishing very hard. 
and it kind of becomes worse and worse as you go along. Um, So that is why I, when I see people doing a lot of nice sketches, I will also like them to push themselves to do more overpaints and just keep on banging on uh, until things get some substance. Just because you have put on some nice brushwork doesn't mean that it's finished so try to go beyond and uh, yeah that's where you learn kill your darlings as they say uh, it's when you break down and kill your darlings that is when you get better. If you keep on doing the same routine every time, and you never go out of this comfort zone, you never break down, you never break things down, you won't become a better painter. I can guarantee that you will be stuck. I've seen, especially one woman, I've known her on Facebook for many, many years, she has not become better despite painting and painting and painting and painting as well. It's like she can't see. Uh, I don't know why it stops. You kind of have to just go beyond, as I say. Uh, and objects are perfect for this. I mean, it can't be better than paint objects. It's like, uh, I'm just going to put in some here. Objects are the most, uh, they are there for you and they will not leave until you are done. And um, they doesn't, you don't have to pay them, you might have to buy them, but you don't have to pay them. And they don't. Say they will be there in so and so time, and then just don't show. These things doesn't happen. So, yeah. So objects make objects your best friend. Very important. Okay, I will do some more painting and then I will show you the sketching results. Okay, 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 okay. Now, yeah, I think I'm almost done with the sketch. Uh, there's no use to do anything more, really. Um, Put on some, uh, maybe some textures in the back, but here maybe tones a little bit. So, yeah. I think the sketch became quite dynamic and quite nice. Composition is basically spot on, and uh, yeah. Of course, there's a lot of stuff to work on. But it's fine.
fine. So then I let it dry for a while, a day or two, three. I actually do hang it over, usually over an oven or something, so it dries faster. But it, the thing that won't dry fast is the thick layers I've put on there. Uh, that, is, that always takes a little bit more time. But the thin layers here, it dries in a very short time. So. Uh -huh. A little bit of, of um, um, it's like if you want to save your colors, you can actually put the if you wanna, don't want your colors to dry fast, you can put your palette into the fridge. Not a fridge, but a refrigerator. And don't freeze it, um, but that's a way to make the drying process of your paint go slower. That is why actually the, the process goes slower in winter. You know, our paintings dry slower in winter time because it's a little bit less or a little bit more uh, a little bit colder. Yeah. Uh, so when it becomes a little bit uh, a few degrees more you tend to start to dry faster. Now I have a studio in the cellar so I don't notice that much if it's summer or winter but it's a few degrees warmer during summertime especially if it's very hot outside and I have some fans on that drags in fresh air I get the heat in and then actually things start to uh, dry faster so yeah It's kind of fun. Okay, I think this will do for now. Uh, there's no need for me to go deeper into any detail. This is a glass thing, and uh, I think it be the sketch became quite nice. So, with this, I rest my case, and until next time.
Okay, another day, another glaze, another layer. Just gonna get the colors out like this and wait a few minutes and then I will do a glaze and start painting. Yay! It is Old Hall Retouche Vanis, just as you know. And, um, yeah. I usually don't use any Dama Vanis, I don't put on an end furnace or lock it in like that because I like to be able to keep them more open. And, um, even at the end, I like only to use this one. So maybe that has to do with the colors I use and stuff like that. But that's how I do it. So next time uh, it is glazing and okay, ready to glaze a little bit. This is basically the. Time I'm going to talk about it in this video, so listen carefully. I use uh, French Ultramarine, uh, sometimes French Ultramarine Dunker, and some Kraplak. And I just do like this to shake it up a little bit, get some oil. It's just a second layer. So, uh, I will do this several times during the process and I will then come closer and closer and closer to the finished result as I go along. I can also actually use, I vary it a little bit, I can also use some more bluish if I want to do that and put in some shadows and stuff, but in general I mix red and blue. I can also use more clean blue colors. There's no, there's no limit as long as you use a primary colors. I think it will be okay. You don't want to mix too many colors into the glaze, but brown and stuff. I don't know. Maybe someone do that too. So what I do now is. Just go over it and scrape it down a little bit. And just take away some of that oil, excess oil, shake it up. And I will start with the light areas here. As I usually do, and just keep painting, which is a good thing, I guess. Uh, I'm going to show you uh, now. I want to several weeks now since I painted on this. I went to my parents for summer holiday and uh, the summer vacation for three and a half weeks and the apple was just standing in my fridge when I put it in there it was fresh now it is more like this it's starting to deteriorate so I guess it's gonna be a apple that is not of the freshest kind. It makes it a little bit more yellow in the light areas. Uh, it limits the colors a little bit, I see. But I'm going to do my best to give it as much, the richest hue and colors I can. 
the good thing about it's now starting to deteriorate uh, and you get some more uh, you know there's a brownish thing spot here that will probably grow a little bit while I'm painting and there are different things like that that I now have to deal with so I'll probably just make it a little bit more interesting give it a little bit more personality as I go along and something more to work with uh, the skin is kind of getting a little bit wrinkled and, um, it's more red shifted it's not that bad some of the green there was some green in it when it started out but that is basically gone so now the green will be more in the shadows and there will be some green down here some yellow you know when it's yellow you have all the complementary colors and um, stuff so that is what I now will have to work with I'll take the time so I don't make this into a 10 hour project I like my long videos but they can become a little bit too long for some people and I need to talk about painting Difficult things is always to get these these uh, um, the nuances from here to the background. Uh, that is a problem I've been dealing with now for well since I started painting. It's a thing that is really really difficult to do to make it kind of vanish and make it feel natural so yeah that is the goal anyway so I just will work on that until I find the right spot the right thing uh, yeah Now these yellow apples tend to become very yellow when I paint them and I guess there's a reason for that you know I I do usually exaggerate everything that I see so the my subjective dimension comes in there I have really sometimes problems staying uh, objective and uh, I become a very fast, a very subjective painter and uh, the colors becomes very strong so it's a thing I have to work a lot with but you know it's pain actually were for a while there I was wondering about actually changing the apple with a new one but then I think that would be some sort of cop out it's better for you to have seen the apple in the beginning in the first segment and see how it changes and how I change it as I go along I also found some apples with leaves on a tree and so maybe I'm gonna do another apple painting from with leaves I painted a couple of them before but I would like to try again so probably do that to fill up my patron giveaway things anyway so I'm still alive so it's a good way to do it it's a good uh, thing to train my eyes and um, 
still lives is something anyone can have on the wall. So oh, I think it's a good a good giveaway. Oh, can that spot? There's one here. There's a lot of them actually. There's something to work with. And it's typical for me to become very neurotic when I do these things. I try to basically get every. I never get pleased with what I do. I just keep on banging on and. In the end, I might even do too much, you know, it goes over that blue, thin blue line. <laughs> and cross over into I'm losing a little bit of my control. But that is kind of what gives my paintings their intensity. I think. A lot of people tell me that, first of all, my paintings are more are more in reality than on video and photo. They're more alive, more balanced actually in the colors, despite being a little bit impressionistic and expressionistic in the colors. They are a little bit more uh, toned in reality. It always annoyed me with digital photo and digital video that it is an interpretation of the object. So. I try to keep this loose. Now, for now, anyway. And, um, yeah. Let's see if I can get a better brush. I have too many brushes hanging around. Be more careful with that too because it's very easy to lose brushes when you don't, you know, go into the flow and you just don't control how many brushes you are using, and suddenly you forget to, to wash some of them and you actually lose brushes. Um, yeah, try to make sure to clean your stuff when you're done for the day. And um, because you know, brushes cost money and uh, throwing them away is it's not smart.
Okay, I'm just going to keep painting and I'll see you later. Okay, been working for a while. I'm going to do some uh, around. I think it's kind of nice when it was this open, but I also like to put on a uh, kind of close it a little bit. It's quite nice with a more sketchiness behind there, but it's not what I usually do. I like to get it a little bit more, shall we say, that it's a little bit more uh, worked on. So. And it also gives me more darkness and gives me more light, so I'll just do it like this and then we'll work with the colors afterwards to push more color into it. That's the way to go with it. Mm -hmm. Kind of the same. I have this this kind of. Uh, let's see what time it is, so I don't make this so long. Try to. What I do when I work like this is trying to make it more like there's air behind it. Uh, so kind of it's this infinite room, no concrete background really. Just keep it totally open. Sometimes I like to put in a more concrete background, but uh, in this I don't. And yeah. See how I work. I just you have to have some to do this quite this fast. You have to have some uh, inkling of what you what you are looking for. Uh, you have to have some uh, idea of looking into the future and see what the brush strokes will become later as you go along as I foreseeing the future and uh, because if you don't have any skills yet working this fast can be 
very difficult for you. But skill comes with painting, so it's just to start painting. As you see now, I try to mix in. Actually, there's more light behind here as it actually is already, but I will try to enhance that a little bit. You see, I'm working towards the apple like this, and then I Later we'll go over this again, then I start building the shadow and I put in more colors in the different... That is also why I love using the old Holland paints because you can paint over it so many times in the same layer and it will always be a little bit sticky and give you this um, sculptural thing. That I feel is very important. So, yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. There's a glass. Uh, I already saw that in the beginning. And it's standing on glass, so it reflects also uh, what's beneath it, which is a wooden. Uh, I think it's kind of a red wood, actually. It seems like red wood. So it has this. Maybe it's oak, but very old. Not sure, actually. I found it in a container years ago. And um, yeah, I find things all the time. I'm the type of person who finding stuff all over the place. Usually go like this. Uh, the way I do it now is that I drag it this way. And since I drag it this way, I can actually manage to create a, a very nice shadow there with no actual line. In the end, it will just flow right into the background. As you know, there's no real lines in reality, there's only light and, and uh, vanishing points. Uh, but you have to, in some way or another, you have to mimic it. But you can't mimic it with putting in lines, unless it's very well placed and has an address and maybe strengthening, I can put in a little bit of a line just to strengthen it, just like Leonardo da Vinci did in his paintings and drawings especially his drawings, if you look at them he is using both the shadows and lines in a very conscious way which makes it uh, quite open and it comes alive. So yeah. Huh.
Yeah. I will just keep painting and get back to you later. 10 minutes, the segment is enough. Okay, here we are. More painting. Shape up this thing of mine. I'm going to go down here and try to do a little bit more painting on that. Like this. Yeah, yeah, should do it. Uh, the thing with the um, with the um, um, mirror there or glass is that this it is toned down to a more red shift so I need to get it you know, tone it into a red shifted realm so I'll do that and Yeah. And I'll also keep it down. I'm not going to have any texture in it. I'm just going to, because it's a reflection, and there won't be a texture in the reflection in the same way. Uh, Sculptural, sculptural dimension disappears a little bit in the reflection of it and I will take that into consideration so yeah keep it down just give it a good Shake it's a medium. So here, here, this. Maybe going a little bit too further out. Yeah, it has to be inside of here. Because I'm actually not seeing. Well, it can go on the outside. So it has to be here, I guess. A little bit more in. I have to uh, change it a little bit. These are the things you should actually try to get done in the beginning so you don't have to go in and change things later. Tank can tend to be uh, something that steals a lot of time if you have to change things. So this far out. So now it's, yeah. And this one is actually goes further out. And that shape. Actually it goes almost. Yeah. So this one has to come in. And a little bit out here. But as I said, it's kind of red shifted, so. And um, just go, I have to do more detail or more 
work more with that anyway. And this is just to adjust how it is supposed to be. And on this one too, it's totally wrong. It comes here and it goes underneath like this. Stuff like that. Need a better transfer. This one is a gunner, I think. Or is it? No, it's just about. I missed it. You know, it is quite smart to. Take care of your brushes. As I said before, brushes are money. And money is freedom. Money is actually artistic freedom. If you have money, you don't have to do commission works and stuff like that. And you can actually focus only on your own art. Of course, everything. Even a commission work is your own art. If not, you shouldn't actually do it. I wouldn't do... I wouldn't... I have said no to things that I... that isn't a part of my... my thing. Like illustrations or painting walls for people or stuff like that. I just say no. That has nothing to do with me. My paintings are done on uh, canvas and uh, they have to be at least in uh, relation to my personal painting preferences. I need to be more sad. Yeah. But as I said, money is so important if you're going to be independent, so if you can take care of your money, that would be really helpful for you. And um, sadly, I haven't been very good at that. And right now, I'm kind of suffering a little bit from it. But I know I'll work myself back up again and just keep on banging on. Uh, yeah. Now the battle starts, you know, I have to find this, uh, find the right shape and stuff and the right distances and everything and that is when all hell breaks loose. Even a, even an apple is not that easy and you've seen me before painting apples, how much I start to struggle in the end and yeah we learn something from every single painting so I just have to yeah
of silence, I was kind of going into my thinking, thinking about stuff. That is what I do actually when I paint, I go into this deep flow and I connect with some kind of introspection type of inner voice and it's an amazing thing how we as human beings can use this the creative process to connect with this deep introspection and um, yeah I would highly recommend even if it's just a hobby, there's some it's lighter behind here, and uh, there's dark here. So I have to fix that. And the shape here goes more out, and uh, I have a bunch of work to do. And the apple itself is just getting more and more yellow and more and more brown spots and yeah, well, I guess that's how it's going to be, yeah. Okay. Just need to find the right shape, the right color, to find the right everything. I'm going to use my kind of micro. I think it's going to become nice in the end, actually. Micro impressionist. Ah, mm. oh, 60 minutes. Yeah. There we go. Yay! I have been working on this apple for a while. And I went to vacation at my parents' house for three and a half week, and I had a lot of color in it. Uh, it was quite yellow then, but I had some color in it. But in this time, it has turned into kind of uh, well. If I see if I can focus. Well, it's even worse than this. It's kind of just turned into. A rotten corpse in a way. You can see the difference between these two apples. Uh, it was more yellow-ish, this one. But what I'm going to do now, I'm going to give this up because this apple is deteriorating so fast now that it's only going to be, be yellow and reds and it's not going to be any color contrast and I'm just starting to really hate it. So what I'm going to do is going to remove this and 
put this in this one uh, and uh, just sketch this instead uh, I'm going to lift it a little bit more that way okay so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to paint this one instead and uh, hopefully that will be better so it's kind of a reboot restart so now you can also see how I just scrape this down and uh, paint over it and I yeah because there's a lot of textures and stuff in it brushwork I can keep that into the next apple so yeah okay okay and I'm gonna redo it what I do then is just to basically take away some of the textures just shake it up a little bit and just start painting uh, the good thing with this one is that it has all the colors of the rainbow and uh, it's, it's not that hard to go from even can I need some more medium uh, I can just put some blue over it almost like glaze and it will actually turn you see here now it just turns green because of the yellow and uh, it's not that hard to change it there's so much fresher colors and the shape is a little bit different so uh, it's very different actually and uh, yeah so here you see how I quite easily just changes the whole thing maybe that is interesting for you to see because people wonder about that too how do I can I paint over can I do this can I do that and the answer is yeah you can yes you can you can uh, uh, that's a good thing about oil paint if this was a uh, This was um, watercolor, something like that. That would be a totally different problem, of course. So so much nicer to work with because it's so the green and the reds and there are all kinds of different colors. Uh, and I kind of like this apple too because it is it have a strange shape. Uh, and it's not boring in any way so yeah uh, I'm using I see there are some here I can actually also use some of my um, uh, Prussian blue there were no almost no colors left in that apple other one it just was turning into one of these leaves, you know, uh, in fall when they have just totally deteriorated. And uh, uh, then there is no more color, there is no more neons, uh, just orange. Everything else is just gone. So. I really start to feel it. I, it's like it's like a feeling. I just start to feel, you know, I can do two things here. I can just continue and pretend I'm gonna be able to fix this, and I could can in a way I can be able to fool people. Uh, people are not able to see what I see in in a concrete way, but. I think they can actually feel it a little bit with something is a little bit off and 
despite that the person who got this uh, this uh, painting in the Patreon giveaway probably would you know lo like it but they would I think even a normal person would actually feel that there was something something missing and that is one of the things that I appreciate being being honest emotionally and intellectual honest despite that this cost me some more hours of painting and uh, of course uh, time is money for me too it is worth it because I'm more I'm more into getting things right than earning money and that is has always been a problem for me because I've always been good at spending money but I'm not that good at taking care of money and actually earning money uh, so but I mean you can't take money into your grave anyway so I think it's better to be um, artistically honest and do a good job then then lie. If I continued with that painting, it would have been lie. I don't like lying. I want to speak the truth both in life and in painting. So already now you can actually see how much potency this gets. How it just comes alive, and uh, I also I was actually playing. Yeah, because I've had real. I've been struggling like crazy, getting started every day, because I was trying to finish this painting, and I. There was something in me, I just didn't feel like working on it. And there's, when that happens, there usually is a reason for it. If I don't really like it, it takes me a lot more time to finish a painting. Or something is off, something isn't totally how I want it to be. It really becomes a struggle getting started because when you're not pleased with something you really aren't that it's not that easy to get into the flow and just now I was actually listening to piano concerts of uh, Beethoven and for some reason I think it was actually the music and, um, and uh, everything that just told me it's almost like Beethoven told me from the grave that this Knut is not good enough. Restart the whole thing. And then I asked myself, am I going to just paint over it? And not show that process in the video that I'm posting on YouTube? Or am I going to show you when I fail? And that is exactly what I did. I, I did show you that I did fail and it wasn't necessary. But I was actually a little bit unsure on that apple in the first place because it was quite, it wasn't that much, much color in it. But when, when, a, when an apple is around for like two months, it's, it was in my fridge, it kind of starts to change um, so yeah well now you can actually see how I also paint over it and that is also a lesson to be learned and um, the good thing here is now all the brushwork I've been doing underneath becomes a part of this because all the all the brushwork underneath 
kind of shines through or, or becomes a texture on top. That is why, why I love to paint uh, uh, over and over, I'm kind of trying to, not trying, I am, I'm painting several layers so that um, it becomes this relief and uh, because I had all this beautiful brushwork underneath, all, the, all my choices as I call it, this will now be reflected into this painting here. So this new apple. So I didn't actually lose the work underneath there. I didn't lose it. I just uh, had to use it in a different way. And they have used uh, uh, X-ray on uh, different painters like Rembrandt and uh, different classical paintings. And you can see the cell they have painted over things, even people and new motifs and stuff underneath. So, so they knew that they, despite having wasted a lot of time on a motif they couldn't actually manage to finish or wasn't pleased with, the work you put in isn't lost. You can paint over it. And uh, yeah. But you have to, don't be too quick doing that because many people would do that when they, at the, when they get into trouble they would be too quick trying to start over and uh, you shouldn't give up until it's just absolutely necessary and the main catalyst actually for me giving this up today was I saw that even the shadow started to lay around in a redshift or a warmth so I didn't even get uh, a warm and cold contrast in the way that I like and that's what I saw, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to struggle with this and it's going to eat my time and I'm going to hate it like crazy even if I call it a day. So that's why I decided to uh, paint over it. And that's a good thing because now the whole thing becomes way more natural. And you see the colors are kind of linked better together and stuff like that. So yeah. You are you can give up, but don't give up too soon. But don't pester yourself for too long either with things that will never turn out well anyway. So one of my my onion paintings went through that same process but an onion you know the the, the crispy crispy onion the, the colors stays usually the same even if it dies so it's easier to to paint but I was also struggling like crazy with that and I'm the kind of person who can make an apple into an existential crisis and as my mother said oh I'm spending way too much time on these things and I shouldn't pester myself I shouldn't um, I shouldn't use that much time on it it's, it isn't worth it and, but you know it is worth it it is worth spending that time and the frustration and if you can learn it one thing from this, patience is gold. Patience is where art comes. You know, there's a lot of a lot of conceptual artists in the world that are basing their art on idea alone, and I just find it so bloody boring. I actually kind of hate it. So. Anyway. That's what I think about that. So, that looking quite nice. There's this nice shadow room over here.
I'll take a nice photo of it. Maybe I'm gonna have it. Uh, I've been asked if I could actually show the, the subject matter. I should actually get better to to do um, videos. My videos are so crude and direct. There's no there's no fancy stuff and uh, of course as a YouTube creator you would actually earn way more money, get way more clicks if you uh, are making cool videos. But To me, this is kind of to the point, and, and uh, yeah. I'm gonna try to better myself. I, could, I have good video editing programs on my computer, but I haven't uh, the stamina basically to just sit down and learn. It's so silly. So I'm just using very crude uh, equipment and do it very simplistic. And some people actually love that because it's so to the point. You have to understand that you can't learn to paint uh, if you don't. Um, you can't. I can't teach you how to paint in ten minutes. And if you really want to learn to paint, you need to watch. If you want to learn to paint from other people, I mean, you can actually learn to paint yourself just by painting. That is how I did it. I didn't learn from anyone. I just painted and I learned from my mistakes. I, of course, I learned from, from uh, all my masters were dead, okay? All my masters are already dead. I've been dead for hundreds of years. So um, that's also a good thing, really, because you don't have to compete with anyone. I, well, I wouldn't compete with anyone anyway. I appreciate great work. Uh, so, but I'm not the envious kind of person. I'm not, I don't, I'm not full of envy or. I'm not a narcissist, to put it that way. I recognize uh, people's hard work and uh, and all the hard work it actually takes to to do it. So when I see something good, I don't feel to put feel I need to put it down uh, because. I really recognize the difficult task of creating something beautiful. So. See, and bada boof, and bada boom, bada boof, now it's an apple. Probably learn more from this than seeing me struggle with this yellow thing. Uh, yeah, this is way better. Okay, now we've got an idea. Yeah, that was nice. Hmm, good. Twenty minutes almost. So, see ya. And okay, I let it dry a little bit, so I'm just gonna. Uh, this is layer, then actually, I usually would put on some let it dry a little bit longer, but I'm going to uh, put on some more paint before I let it dry. 
totally, so it's a little bit wet and wet, but it's kind of kind of sticky, so I can actually add more paint, which is great, actually, actually, yay. You see I'm working in directions now and uh, see how easy it is for me to, to create this shape now because I have more colors to work with. The other apple was really dead, it was just dead in water and happily I found this one and I was actually going to eat it but then I just fell for the shape. And uh, yeah, so that is what I'm doing now. I also have a tree outside which has some very delicious apples with leaves on. I thought I was going to pick some apples and uh, maybe even make uh, put on some some apple still life or some kind of thing. With leaves, maybe paint one that is only. I wonder if I'm gonna paint one that is um, more like one of the flower paintings I have, where I paint a whole flowery thing in eight and a half hours. And um, maybe I should do something like that and just try to keep it very sketchy. But I'll see what I do. I painted uh, um, apples with leaves before. The thing is that the leaves tend to deteriorate very fast, so you need to be quite. You need to work on them if you want. To, you have to decide basically if you want to have them fresh or or not. Anyway, that is something I'm planning, so see they are. It's fall now, summer came and went, and uh, time flows fast. It's unbelievable how fast time passes. It's almost disturbing. Next year I will be on well, a half a year's time, a little bit over a half a year. Well, it's not a half a year, in like Eight months, I'm going to be 53 suddenly. 53! It's crazy how fast it goes. Yeah. See the shape here, it's just beautiful. So much easier to work with more color. It's actually going to be a little bit more uh, green now, orange. See, I'm working in directions here, I'm pulling it like this. You can do it like this too, but it's a totally different uh, thing. You have to decide very clearly where you want the directions to go. Follow the shape. I'm going to zoom a little bit in so you can actually see closer what I'm doing to the apple. Maybe that would be interesting for you.
it's funny. It's 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 basically as you become a better painter and you you teach yourself how to how to paint. Uh, the intuition you can actually see. Your intuition takes over, and you are able to see what shape, what direction you need to paint for it to get that that physical shape you're after like behind here you go like this I don't go like this I go like this I kind of try to follow the shape and here I go the other way here again I need to put in some behind there also to it's funny, in a way this is the cord, like the, if this was a baby, it would be the cord to the, to the womb where all the nutrition comes from. So in a way it's a plant, this is a fetus in a way, with all the seeds in it, and this is the cord, the tree. I build it. Oh, I did some mistake here. Actually, it's more like it bends more. This one. I want that to be in this painting, so I have to redo the whole thing. Actually, I was too quick there. Take your time. Don't mess up too much. And uh, paint what you see. See you. It's quite high, this one. It's all the way up there. So, higher actually. Higher. It's going to be a real cool apple painting. Now, this makes me happy. I was so miserable painting the other apple. Just I couldn't get started. I was so I just knew that this can't happen. I just knew it. And in the end, painfully, grudgingly, I decided to give it up and I actually ate it just to just to kind of tell myself. Probably tell myself this was the right choice. It was like eating your enemy. <laughs> it became the apple became my enemy. And it's so important that you love what you do, what you paint. Because the flow will come to you so much faster if you love the motif you're working with or on mm -hmm. now it's going to be more brown and stuff in it it's funny i had some alcohol just a bottle of wine every weekend for three weeks and I just went bang into total anhedonia and I couldn't really work and that was just one bottle of wine every Saturday like four glasses with friends it was really fun you know I love the buzz but I can't do it anymore because I can actually lose the whole week. My brain has the typical ADHD. It's sort of a little bit bipolar, but not kind of not the kind of bipolar that is destroying people like 
you go long times in a, in a high and then long time in a low it's more like it's kind of fluctuating every day a little bit but if I do the wrong things like eating the wrong food or drinking or training too much or sleep not sleeping enough and stuff like that I just can't get anything done with my paintings and if I drink all the other things that are wrong becomes what is it, exacerbated or you know it's kind of doubled and double tripled in the negative force so the best thing for me is basically almost quit drinking altogether maybe once in a while in a party which I have Sometimes I have parties in my studio, but in general, I could drink maybe a bottle of wine like four times, four times a year, in very good company, but I cannot uh, drink more than that if I'm going to be able to be a creative person, so I quit. I just can't do it. Can't. The good thing, I'm a very social person without drinking. Everybody think I'm high or drunk anyway when I'm happy, when I'm talking to people, dancing. So, and I have gotten myself some self esteem uh, the later years. I started to get to know myself. Some kind of feeling. Feeling. Uh, good in my own company, I'm not shy anymore, I'm not feeling bad, I'm not feeling worse than other people and stuff, so I don't really need alcohol. What I need is this, I need the brushwork, I need to see the results, I need to, see, I just need these things. Uh, and I was in a way lucky, there were things that happened to me this year, in the beginning of the year just totally came from nowhere not from nowhere but it wasn't expected kind of in a negative way but it really connected me with myself and it also sent me into studying stoicism like Marcus Aurelius and all the stoics the old philosophy and it just resonates so much with me now. Just calm the fuck down and do the work. And your life just becomes beautiful. When I can do my work, I don't need anything else. It's just good food, healthy food, and my work, and everything is just fine. And... Uh, so glad I have that kind of personality. I can tap into such a beautiful resource, actually loving silence and a company of my own thoughts. So, and this is what painting gives me. And this is also what painting can give you. I would recommend that you study Marcus Aurelius meditations and Seneca and Epicurus and, and the Stoics. Stop wasting your time on drinking and partying. Now girls are great but they also take a lot of time and it's a lot of noise. So if you can avoid actually if you can avoid not needing the attention from others to feel that life is good, it's the best thing. And then you can also choose more wisely whose attention you actually want, who do you want to waste your time on. Because if you are depressed and you are hungover, you tend to bring people into your life that you don't really 
don't they don't really bring anything good with them and that's also a thing you can easily avoid if you start basically choosing from true attraction instead of neediness which I feel a lot of people do oh I need love, I need this, I need that no, you need to find yourself you need to find peace of mind you need to find the inner voice the inner calming voice that will be there when you close your eyes for the last time and for me that is the, my creative work and if some sweet girl, woman comes into my life from the side which I actually be a positive force. I will be open for that. But if that never happens, that's okay. I'm ready to basically be single for the rest of my life. Because I have this I have painting. And that's more important than anything else. So, yeah, that was today's rant. I hope it makes sense. And uh, find your flow. The beauty of flow is better than any drug, better than any girl, it's better than any man, if that is what you want, or whatever. It's better than anything. And it's actually what I'm trying to tell my daughter. You go to the gym every day and train and get a dopamine kick. And you feel good for a while, but it will pass. But if you consistently do creative work, it won't pass, it will become a part of you. Or at least it lasts way longer than sex, drinking, training, and all the other things we do. So, with this, I rest my case, and I hope you enjoyed. So okay, here we are. I'm just gonna put on some uh, glaze almost forget about I uh, forget this and then I this is a retouche furnace it's from Old Holm retouche furnace and uh, I do that every time or not not necessarily every time but uh, to get this going now I so I can see it I first put on this a touche vernis, I let it like dry for about 10 minutes and then I will do a glaze and scrape it down and paint as I usually do. I've seen me do that before, I guess. But you, as you know, it's always nice to show. People, just in case there are new people watching. So, okay, okay, okay. Uh, a tiny glaze in pink, and I just need to. What I'm using is uh, French Ultramarine and Kraplak to create my glaze. Uh, I'm probably going to see, I think this is going to be more in the blue uh, because I don't want it to be too red. As you can see now when I go over here, the nuances and the 
different textures and stuff is now falling into the painting and it gets this uh, zzz kind of effect. Uh, and now on the and the good thing is with the apple I have underneath here, I also get that texture. So it starts to come alive. Now I can go in here and paint over. So yeah. It is just you just have to figure out yourself what you wanna wanna do, how you wanna use the glaze. You can you can glaze with with any primary color. Uh, I mean, you could probably glaze with any black for that that matter. But for me, as a painter, uh, it is more. Uh, it is the primary colors that is the most important for me, and that is what I stick to. So to keep it kind of clean, not too clean, because then it will be boring. So, and uh, to take away a little bit of the oils. If there's too much oil, so now I'll take away some oil. Also, some color is probably doesn't matter. Now it gets this very nice effect. better you see now it gets all these beautiful textures and stuff sadly I have to paint over it but that's okay because I'll probably do this a couple of more times before I'm done with it anyway and now I'm gonna start doing more focused painting start in the light areas. Now I have this big lump of white here so just scrape that back out again. So I've got that light and there's some light here. I can scrape that out. See how nice that is. I'm so glad I changed this apple. Oh, I just oh gods. It's so you know, I don't believe in gods but I mean you should listen to your intuition. You should try your best for as long as you can. But at some point you just have to tell yourself that this is as far as I can take it. Now I scraped out again. Getting some colors here. And it becomes very natural when all the color, the textures and colors kind of shines through. It could almost be like this now. It could almost be finished. I think it's quite lovely actually. Um, it could almost be finished as it is now because it has this very nice texture. But I want to work some more with it. And I might ruin everything. Uh, but that is that is that is a gamble. If you're a painter, you have to keep killing your darlings. If you only keep scratching the surface, and you never go into this deep, um, uh, more deeper, what should we say? Uh, if you never kill your darlings, you always stay safe. You always stop. It's nice, it will convince anyone, okay? It has these textures, so beautiful, it's kind of zzz, has this very natural feel to it. But it doesn't have the right substance yet. It doesn't have what I'm after. So I will just keep banging on. 
And um, even if the end result doesn't become this nice or in this way, it is worth, worth breaking down just for the learning process. People, people don't get that. And, uh, uh, that is what, what is so time consuming with paintings like this. And the good thing now is that uh, the paint I put in are now mixing and the oil and the retouche furnace is now mixing in to the new color I put on and it becomes a little bit, um, can you say, slippery uh, and now it's sticky, sticky, sorry, sticky so that I can actually paint over over and over. I want to have this nice uh, apple skin feeling without it becoming too stuffed and it's always a very difficult place to go. So It's such nice uh, textures here now. This apple is going to become one of my best. I'm convinced about that. Am I? Can I go into it now? Anyway, I think I have kind of uh, explained so I can uh, just and make another thing after nine minutes is good. Okay, a while later, uh, I don't know if it's better or worse. You have to decide. I'm just trying to <coughs> kind of round it. So, my beautiful daughter called me, so I talked with her for a while, then I painted some more, and um, yeah. So I think I'm getting in. continue tomorrow because now it's like nine in the morning in Norway and it's so typical for me to to fuck up the the days by sleeping all day and stuff. So that's how it is. To be me. I think this apple is going to be nice in the end. 
it's very easy to overdo stuff so I just have to keep on working quite slowly with it so I can get the right shape and stuff <coughs> It's going to disappear in there because it has some more reddish tone. And then again, the light hits on the side there, so it is quite bright. And that is also quite difficult to figure out exactly how bright it is and, and get that right shape. That is why the kind of sketch when I did the glaze, when everything was kind of open, everything falls into place, there is no real detail, uh, there is just an impression of an apple, a beautiful impression actually, because I like the textures, but it doesn't have any real, real substance, uh, and uh, it's way harder to find that extreme shape that I'm after. This kind of thing that just hits you and um, comes out. But it is about toning down the right places and pushing other things up, up and down, up and down. So, yeah. Get some toning in the mid here. Get this down. There's also you can't just keep on pulling out light, you have to also pull down into the dark. Or you just keep adding more and more white, which in the end won't give you any more shape or any more darkness anyway or light it would just give you white and uh, that's why you need to push these things further down mm -hmm. I feel such peace when I'm painting it's just brilliant darker here and there's more lights on the back side there so Thinking out loud. And this comes more up here. 
and yeah. The thing is to give this thing the same personality as that apple actually have, so it feels real, not too fake. And it's difficult. And I just love this challenge. It's so challenging. You see now, almost every everything I, I painted over is now basically gone. Or the glaze is basically gone, but it is underneath there anyway. So it's actually going to be my blueish. Right, fuck. Anyway, I just want to shake this up a bit. It's a very minute shadow behind there, and it explains it. And I will try to that in there. Like this. Drops all the way down here.
100. So, it's called Earth's Perspective. Okay, stop filming now. 12 minutes should be good. I can actually go closer so you can see it. Yeah, it's getting shaped. So, yeah, very yellow. It's not that yellow in reality, but I guess that is how it is. Okay, a little bit of retouche vernis. Uh, I'm going to do the last layer today, hopefully. And I'm just going to go over it like this a little bit. And I'm going to do a glaze and then I'm going to lay, lay in the last layer on this Patreon giveaway. I'm really pleased with it. And uh, yeah. Actually, so just gonna let it dry for ten minutes and then I will add a glaze and start painting. Okay, here we are. Gonna do the little glaze and I'm gonna not do that much glaze actually, I'm just gonna fill in some of the give it some uh, bang and then I will just do the last layers paint it should be like this, I like to get the textures to start coming alive, as you've seen before. And this is basically what I need in this. So uh, it's not that much, as you can see. It's just to give it a little bit more natural feel to it. Then I will use that glaze to to build more layers. And, uh, yeah, not sure if I'm gonna do way more behind here. That is pretty necessary. I can do it anyway. Let's remove it a little bit. Press. Yeah. Okay, is that okay? You think? Tell me what you think in comments really important for me to know. Uh, when you comment it's it's really nice because I, I can actually relate to that somebody actually are watching. <laughs> so it's kind of inspiring to hear from people all over the world. So leave a comment. Really appreciate it. Give a thumbs up. Also, I really appreciate it. Now, I used a palette that is very clean for the glaze, so I don't mix in my other colors into the clean colors. And I'll just do my face, take some other way. Give it a more. Okay. 
So, so what I'm going to do, what is important now is to kind of make this line here dissolve. I need to create a little bit more than thickness in the apple. I will keep some of the Keep some of the roughness, but yeah, so that is the goal for now. I have quite new brushes, so these are really expensive, and uh, I used them up far too fast, which of course is a problem. I need to be better at cleaning them at the end of the day. Okay, I'm just going to start with a highlight. It's not really that much of a highlight. It just, in reality, it's just right here. And there's a highlight here. And this has to be toned down to create. I can do like this to shake it up a little bit. But to get this, light area now to be inside I need to not paint too much on that and if I do I have to keep it down and I have to evolve this part here get the lines in order kind of dissolve the lines and then boom I will be where I want to be I guess so yeah these apples are always quite difficult. I don't know why? It has something to do with the vividness of the colors. That really is a challenge. Because as a, I call myself a closet impressionist or expressionist. So uh, I'm very often exaggerating colors to a point where I actually start liking it and then I have to find a way back to more a more sublime thing and um, that is my battle that is one of my most difficult battles with the paint to kind of keep it down keep it sublime and not overdo it so easy just to pour in a lot of color, kind of a shock and awe. But that is not really what I'm after. I'm after both of it. I want it to be clean. I want it to have life. I want the colors to kind of zzz, vibrate like in reality. But I also at the same time like it to be, as I say, sublime and um, have everything have address to one another so uh, yeah uh, I like it to look like it's controlled but also out of control at the same time so yeah it's not easy being a painter it's not easy if you have a conscience you know, if you are just a, one of these narcissist painters or they think everything you do is great, that's no problem, that's no sweat, you know. The, those, those people don't care, you know, they, and you can see it in the, in the works they do also. A good artist is struggling, he's never certain. He's never pleased with his work and he tries to push himself to the limit, to the next level all the time. And he suffers, or he or she suffers when he messes up. He really suffers when he can't do it. The, the, the artist who doesn't suffer with his own self-esteem or his own basic meaning of life or whatever uh, will never become anything the 
thing with me, when I can't work, if I go into this, sometimes I just lose contact with what I do. And too much stress or something that comes in from outside, I really do suffer. And um, uh, I've had a few days like that and uh, it almost feels like it feels like I have a hole in my heart. It feels like I'm hung over, severely hung over, without actually being hung over. And the only way out of that is to paint. It is to play music, it is to sleep enough, it is to do all these things that put you on the right track to, yeah, to just Feel alive. There's no other goal for me with my painting on a personal level than that feeling. The driving force is the feeling. That beautiful, intense connection that I sometimes find with myself and I feel so alive. It is like I can go around for a whole day and not being able to connect with anything. You know, I'm just restless. It's almost like I have ants under my skin. And when I actually manage to connect, everything is okay. It's almost like when you take that first glass of wine and you just feel that your brain is leveling out because of, of course, the alcohol uh, pours in more dopamine and you just levels out, you feel, start feeling great. The bitch with alcohol and drugs is that they have these bad consequences while painting it doesn't have those consequences or creative work doesn't have these consequences they just it just send you into this deep 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 and beautiful flow and the day after you have done good work you just zone, you just zone, you just feel so good, so connected. So, yeah. That is what motivates me to paint. What motivates me to do anything, actually. Training, discussions, conversation. It is that beautiful flow, even conversation. Just conversation on the cafe. I was out with a good friend of mine last night and just talking about all kinds of stuff. Over coffee, actually, because I try not to drink much or very often because I get depressed from it after a few days or not the day after, but the day after that and stuff. But talking to a good friend, having a nice conversation. It's just amazing, you know. It's this beautiful, beautiful connection with everything. And it gives this great dopamine high. And yeah, so nice. And then, boom, I fall again. And I have to kind of dig myself out of that hole, basically every day. I have to dig myself out of that hole every day. <laughs> so, it is rough, but it's also so beautiful. I hope this makes sense to some of you, because I know people who are artists, they... Um, 
real artists, real people. I don't mean the, as I said in the beginning, the narcissist artist. I mean the real deal. He knows what I'm talking about. He or she, of course. I think also, maybe, maybe it's worse for men. I, I'm not sure, there's just a hypothesis that these things are even worse for men because men are more prone to things like I would never become I can't even picture myself killing myself because I I love the idea of existing way too much and I'm 100% sure I wouldn't do it with my parents still alive so, and I wouldn't do it anyway, you know, I have a daughter also. And I want to see her future, and I want to see Starship landing on, on uh, Mars, Elon Musk, Starship. I want to see the future, so no, I want to stick around as long as I can. That was a digression. I actually forgot what I was talking about. Well, the point is that I'm not suicidal. I really wanna, I really wanna live, and um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Testosterone. I think maybe testosterone has something to do with men being more. Or prompt to depression because men are less biologically less connected with uh, empathy and sympathy because we are basically born to be warriors and born to be uh, um, more on the War side, the darker sides, and uh, we are we have less less connection with with emotions. So maybe that is a part of it. And I am basically, I would call myself a high testosterone person and as a high testosterone person I've always been that very easy for me to get good at things like training and martial arts and I have a great stamina for work and or at least I had um, but it comes with this kind of ADHD ADHD type of personality and we also tend to be a little bit bipolar maybe so yeah but anyway with the brain like that it's when when we when I not say we when I do created work in connect it is beautiful just as I said it's just beautiful if I lose connection all the other things pops up and uh, maybe that is why more men as I said do actually kill themselves maybe that is more because more men become depressed and also as you age and I, I'm aging, I'm getting older, I'm 52 now and uh, as you age the testosterone level kind of goes down and uh, the stamina goes down 
and uh, it's easy for depression to to kick in. And that is why it's even more important to get away that restlessness. That was my point. That restlessness can be kept down by creative work like this. Even an insignificant apple, which is an ins insignificant apple painting, of course. It's just an apple. Uh, they uh, They give us that beautiful, beautiful flow. Yeah. Calms down the beast. Calms down the ADHD. It calms down the hypermania. It calms down all these things. And it's funny, I have a personality. I can be so intensely happy. And then just same a couple of hours later bloody well in despair but painting painting if I can do that every day be creative every single day the painting just saves the day so yeah anyway I hope that you got something out of my 20 minute rant. Maybe you can recognize some of what I'm saying. So yeah, see you in the next segment. Then I will only talk about painting. I promise. Okay, last touch up. Just small things I'm gonna do and see how long that takes. Usually it takes a hell of a lot longer time than I usually expect, so I just have to uh, be careful. Being careful is extremely important. I just want to um, even out some, some um, lines make them blurry and add some light and uh, add some points of light like here get some more texture into it I could actually scrape use a because I'm well I'm not going to do that could I, because underneath there there are some more bright colors I think so I could use a knife to bring it out but I prefer to do it this way so. So. I was waiting a little bit too long to actually finish this too. So it managed to become a little bit more yellow than when I sketched it. That's quite annoying. <clears throat> so see here I'm just going to use a glaze. There's a blue glaze. And she'll come on in to just a tiny bit um, blurry and I'm using so <clears throat> some cadmium yellow here it's a little bit brighter when you mix this with a when it comes down it becomes a kind of greenish color Some cadmium yellow dunker to get it to become uh, a little bit more reddish. A few places, a yellowish orange type, and uh, there you go. 
See the small pencil I'm using now? Quite small details. I have to keep my eyes... I, I have to really look and really... Because my brain is trying to trick me into thinking some of the things are more bright and some are more more in the shadows you can't really trust only intuition here you have to try to take a step back and do an, an objective um, overview Let's see Now the difference between the textures here and here are just huge and that also creates that nice blurriness and kind of goes over. You want it to feel like it's bending, not just stopping but you know bending and it keeps on going yeah I do actually feel this apple became quite nice so I'm just gonna do as I say some Small adjustments. Corner quits. Spot there. A little bit of reddish glaze. I use different glazes, different colors. I use, you know, I use some cadmium or vermilion, actually. Pure color. Some thought of and uh, yeah. mm -hmm. some spots too. I try to get some spots into it. spot here can, can give the painting a little bit of a um, little bit of character this is um, what I'm using now is the and uh, mix that with the yellow then it can become quite nice I 
to make them the two surfaces just kind of slide together and uh, give them some kind of a shadow in a way this side so it gives it a little bit more of a 3D thing so boom there's a spot small spot here well, this you know it wasn't spotty in the beginning this apple but it has gotten a little bit more character because it was a it's like the other apple that I painted underneath this went way too long and then in the end it just turned totally yellow and useless I really hated it then I, when I started with this it was a little bit more vivid but now even this is turning yellow slowly steadily every day that is why I need to get it done now so I don't come in that horrible situation again where I have to switch apple again So I'm going to tone down the shadows a little bit here. Tone it down. my fingers too and I can do a little bit of cadmium yellow some warmth some warmth and I can give it a little bit of a, a little bit of shape you see now I'm using the glaze just to put more color into it so basically to Clean colors. keep working on that that's always one of my most difficult things to get that right I'm struggling with that mildly in every single apple painting or stuff like that it is the most difficult thing I think getting the 
getting these um, things right. But there's only one way to do it, and that is just to bloody well keep on doing it and uh, don't give up. Now, I didn't want this to be too strong either. I want this to be a little bit more blurry. Just use the back of my pencil. I have to put some, some something there. And just a third, just a sense of there being something there. Yeah. Now this is too bright, way too bright. And I will turn it down again. this and then basically give me some sort of restart on it. Many ways to do that you can I can just take away some of it again like this to make it stand on the glass here I can also strengthen the shadows underneath. There's many ways to make these things come together. My brain wants me to make this a little bit brighter, but I know it's not brighter, it's just a little bit different uh, um, the toning, it's a little bit warmer. But I will probably go back and forth in that for a few hours. I mean, a couple of hours at least before I maybe come to a point where I can say, "Okay, fuck it, I'll give it a leave it at that." So I'm just gonna. Turn off the camera and uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I'm messing up here, totally. It's not the thing I'm after. Oh. Uh. Yeah, I'm gonna Oh, there we are You know, I have to do layer upon layer and then directions 
so that in the end it becomes closer and closer. The reason I did it was some kind of it's kind of messy, some brushwork and stuff. Spots. Okay. Yeah, it worked for a while and okay. I'm gonna do the last, the very, very last things. And this I think has become the point where I just don't want to fuck it up more so I'm gonna just do some glazing and I need some shadows here you see now I'm using the glaze at the end here to, to create some shadows. It can actually be a little bit um, dissolved underneath here. But it doesn't matter. Just the nuances are so close together. The nice thing is this, I can actually now scrape like a little bit like this so I get that nice uh, feeling that it is um, something underneath. You see I want to pull it up a little bit in certain places. Uh, like here. Mm -hmm. So up a little bit and here also a little bit get that over this and yeah now I have kept everything around very all the way down. There's some blue hair from the and there's some orange in the background. But I just want this to be kept down. I'm just gonna do a little bit of a cross over here because mm -hmm. So, also use a glaze here, so I can actually understand. Now that is now not coming true. I'm going to use my pencil like this to bring it up a little bit here, also here, just a tiny bit. So you, you can see I have put brighter colors underneath and then I have glazed or painted over it and now I just go in and I scrape up 
some of the some traces of what's underneath and I get a better a more natural feel to it. Do like this too. And there's a little bit of a difference there. And then we'll explain then what's coming underneath there, which is a part of the wooden surface that the um, that the um, glass thing is standing on. Yeah. So that is how I do that. Do the same behind here. It's almost like drawing. In many ways. Instead of giving it, putting in more paint, just. I don't even think you could see that. Uh, okay, that's what I did. Oh, so what a shame that you couldn't see that. Anyway, what I did was that I put a glaze here. So I got the difference between, you know, the wooden things ending here. And then I have just used the underneath to bring that up. And I do the same thing all the way. Also scraping. Yeah, you know what I'm, I was talking about. So now you can actually see what I did. I'm sorry I didn't realize I... Yeah, so on a distance, and I really feel that this apple became quite nice. Uh, I don't want to overdo it. I tend to become quite manic, and I can't stop, and Sometimes that leads to me ruining the whole thing. And then I had to, really frustrating. I have no idea how intense it is to be me. It is um, a struggle being me. Now I guess many other people struggles too. But I guess that is not my problem. I have enough with my own struggles. So, even when it comes to painting and what I do, I tend to drag it all the way over the top, like everything else I do. There is no half measures, there is no compromise, there is no uh, yeah, respite. That's a good thing in many ways, because as I said many times, it makes existence shine like a supernova in the night. Uh, that was a cliche. <laughs> like a supernova. Right in the middle of life as a supernova and a whimper. That's one of the things I like in the movie. Achilles! When that little boy wakes him up in the morning and has two women around him there. I don't understand why you want to fight that big guy. He just says, well, that is why. Nobody's going to remember you. If you're not willing to fight, nothing real will happen. Now it doesn't really matter if so many people remember you. 
it is more about your inner struggle and a way to kind of engage with life on an active and not a passive level, which I found find to be as uh, Marcus Aurelius to say, in the light of eternity, no amount of applause has any real meaning. Uh, everything fades, everyone dies, everyone will sooner or later be forgotten. The universe, even they didn't know that back then, but but even the universe will cease to exist. So basically everything you do, as I say, I've said many times, what's the difference between living 50 years or 100 years in the light of uh, eternity? Uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't really matter at all, actually. Because the result is basically the same. Everybody dies and everybody ceases to exist. Now he, Marcus Avilius, I guess, believed in the gods, and uh, I don't. So for me, it's kind of kind of sad. But it's what it is. Hopefully. What I'm, you know, it's it's like this this um, this um, this crazy angst people have against this coronavirus and stuff, you know. And uh, I mean, people aren't taking care of their bodies, and then suddenly this virus comes along and it kills basically obese people with underlying conditions and old people. Now everybody gets older and everybody's going to die, so that is natural. Uh, usually it's like viruses and bacteria that kills us in the end, so you shouldn't be surprised there. What surprises me is that people that have done everything, everything, since they were young, to basically kill themselves. Smoking, drinking, getting fat, everything. And then the virus comes and they are running, fat people are running around with masks, scared of dying, scared of getting sick. Well, I don't mean to fat shame people, but honestly, if you are an obese people, person walking around with a mask, which basically is not even necessary. Uh, you're on the wrong track. Now we're all gonna die, as I did say, so it doesn't really matter when. But I mean, if you want to live, you should start at the right end. And maybe do something that leaves a mark and you're gone. I mean, what would we do without... It would be a sad state if we didn't have paintings of Amiel and uh, the greatest artist of all is, in my view, Leonardo da Vinci, because he was also an artist and not just an artist, he was also a scientist. Uh, It would be a sad state of the world if we didn't have that beauty to look to when we are basically destroying ourselves. And uh, what the writings of Marcus Aurelius, despite him saying flat out that your life, life is basically totally, absolutely meaningless, and he's absolutely right about that, uh, especially in an atheistic worldview. Uh, because 
as I say, you're going to cease to exist and you're not going to be there anymore. But just the way he was thinking, the way he was uh, viewing life, <laughs> gives life meaning. So you find meaning in the meaningless. Despite it being meaningless, isn't that, isn't that cool? I mean, that is, you know, life is a bloody paradox. Life and consciousness is the most beautiful thing we have. It's the only thing there is. There is a physical universe, but without us, there wouldn't be anyone absorbing it. You know, maybe other other galaxies, other planets, and stuff, but. At least we don't know about anyone else who are absorbing it like we are. And that wouldn't be there. And it would be like a football match without... Uh, with uh, players that didn't know they were playing. Playing to an empty stage. With no one watching. So in a way... Life is the only thing, or consciousness, introspection especially, and the more honest type of introspection you have, the more honest you are as a person, the more introspection you will have, and the more real life you will actually live, and uh, the more actual life you live, the deeper and more profound your empathy becomes, your sympathy for other people. And you can meet most things in an ironic way, and uh, yeah. So, hedonism will not make you happy. You, you will not be able to eat yourself happy. You won't be able to fuck yourself happy, but you will be able to engage with your creativity, engage with yourself on a deeper level, and at least feel a little bit content. So, yeah. So that is why I'm painting. So now you know. That's my answer. To why I paint. Huh. This should be a video in itself. In its own right. Anyway. This here is very difficult. I'm trying to kind of make this be there and disappear at the same time. Okay. Is this good? Nah. This comes out too much. Let's keep that down. I also need to. Find some right there to push this down here. Okay.
Yeah. I think that's okay. I wonder if I'm gonna try signing it. Aria. My name is K. Oh, it's way too. This is always a problem. Signing is actually difficult. That's not good enough. Okay. Okay. A. Maybe I should do the other thing. Maybe I should do it dark. and some French Ultramarine okay H O L N and D I'm just going to write 20, 20 there. This is a D. Is that okay? I don't want it to be too disturbing. Signing is always a problem. Just push it down a little bit. Like that. So, that was better. was horrible. I'm not good with the signing thing. I have two handwritings, left and right. I kind of write shitty with both of them. So, I'm going to be 220. No, 20 is good enough. Because there's a frame coming, so. Ah, it doesn't matter. 20. No, I think the frame. No, oh, we'll see. Okay, 2020. Now I do think this became quite okay. Of 
course there is always things you can do. And I'll probably do some small adjustments, but enough is enough for now. Okay, I just added a few more small details to it and worked on putting some things here, some things you know in shadows here around. But besides that I'm gonna leave it now. Call it today. I can go back and forth with this for the next century anyway. So this is how it came out and uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, thanks for watching this video and here you are at the end. So again, remember to give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, tell me what you think, share it with your friends. And if you'd like to support my channel, please go to Patreon and uh, sign up for whatever amount you like. You can also do donate on uh, Patreon and PayPal, actually. So, yeah, if you feel you get something out of it, it's... And remember, if you become a patron, a uh, painting like this can become yours. The name of the girl who wanted it is Ida Helene Heindal. A girl I actually know a little bit, personally, so that was quite nice to figure out was confused there for a second but yeah I hope you enjoy and um, I do hope to see you in the next video so with this thank you for watching